mankind's relationship with the world has always been defined by attempting the impossible. As we travel through time and space, we make new discoveries and explore new fields, enjoying the bounties of what the world has to offer. The Earth's existing reserves of energy are depleting. A project that directly addresses this crisis has been launched. This is the first time Xu Shiguang has seen the mini artificial sun device. Deuterium and tritium atoms inside will be heated up to 100 million degrees Celsius to simulate the nuclear fusion in the sun, a reaction that global scientists are seeking to harness. Xu Xiguang is constructing the home for the mini artificial sun, the place where the device will be installed in a year from now. <laughs> Although the testing floor has been backfilled repeatedly, Xu Xuguang is still concerned about the soil saturation rate. As the core plant for the mini artificial sun, the floor load capacity must reach 10 tons per square meter, with a maximum 50 year settlement of just one millimeter. <laughs> Soil replacement can reduce the work duration, but cannot guarantee the land's bearing capacity. Piling reinforcement could delay the project. Xu Xiguang must quickly come up with a better plan. On top of this, the roof's water tightness test must be carried out before flooring is undertaken. The first water tightness test for plant number seven is less than 18 hours away. Jin Guangyi climbs up the 40 meter high roof for the final inspection. The mini artificial sun carries the dreams of generations of scientists worldwide. There's no room for error if the team are to ensure a minimum 25 year roof service life. To avoid interrupting the experiment, an overnight inspection of the 2,562 weld seams has to be carried out. At 9 a.m., the water tightness test begins. Project experts and leaders climb up to examine the roof. This part is crucial to the mini artificial sun's safety. The experiment takes place at the lowest part of the roof, where the weld seams are weak. Builders use sandbags to build a two meter long reservoir and use drain pipes to simulate rainwater from the roof. Hey, go, 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 go,
说的那个水中的区域。Zhu Shiguang will not accept the slightest leak at the Mini Artificial Sun's core plant. This experiment examines the density of welding, as the naked eye can only detect millimeter level errors, while water molecules can test weld quality at a nanometer level. An hour later, water drops are found below the roof. To guarantee the quality of the entire flooring, Xie Shiguang selects a 400 square meter area in plant number 12 as the experimental floor where the Mini Artificial Sun's main device will be placed. Only when successful will the experiment be extended to the entire park. The first layer reinforcement has been completed. Concreting will start in 10 days. Twenty tons of concrete for the experimental floor is ready. The procedure begins. To minimize the impact of temperature, builders have to complete the concreting in under three hours. The second reinforcement for the experimental floor now begins. 65 builders bind 5,382 steel bars to form a grid. This will be attached to the first layer steel bars as the second layer floor skeleton. This is the final flooring procedure. Ten hours later, the 400 square meter concreting is completed. Seven days later, builders carry out their final examination. A crane lifts a 100 ton block of stone and gently lowers it. With the help of lifting jacks, the 100 tons will act on the one square meter area of flooring, generating the maximum pressure allowed for by the designed load capacity of 10 tons per square meter. A settlement of 0.62 millimeters meets design requirements. Meanwhile, the roof's water tightness has also been improved. The foundation has been laid. This will be the future home of the mini artificial sun. The worst fears of Wu Qihe have been realized. The number five Kassen has lost verticality just after reaching the riverbed sediment layer. Wu Qihe is one of the most experienced bridge masters in the country, but even he is worried about the situation. The Chantai Yangtze River Bridge is the world's longest span railway highway dual use cable stayed bridge with a main span of 1,176 meters. Its upper deck serves as a highway, while the lower deck is both a highway and a railway line for high-speed trains. The asymmetric load layout requires a firm bridge foundation. However, the Kassen, the core of the foundation, has reached its deviation limit. Wu Chi He is concerned about the construction personnel and large equipment on this steel Godzilla. The number five Kassen has a cross-sectional area equivalent to 13 standard basketball courts, and it has a total weight of 220,000 tons. A collapse would make headlines around the world. Chen Jing, 
请所有施工人员一小时之内撤离陈井。Cousin deviation has been detected, but there are few details. Construction is suspended, and all personnel have to leave. The Beidou satellite navigation system has been installed on the Cousin to transfer data to the control room. 目前我们这个监测系统显示呢，陈井是下游低，上游高，然后是江侧高，岸侧低。The entire construction process has been plagued by Cousin deviation. Immediate measures must be taken to rectify the tilt. There are 36 compartments within the Casson, each of which has been equipped with two drain pipes to draw water and silt. Only when all these vessels work simultaneously can the Casson sink vertically. Silt pipe number 14 has failed due to gravel congestion. Workers replace the pipe immediately. The clean water from the pipe shows that the Casson still isn't sinking. This means that the congestion in silt pipe number 14 is not the main cause of the deviation. The low water period of the Yangtze River is the best window for Casson operations, and a minimum of 50 centimeters of sinking per day must be achieved. But for now, everything is stuck. Silt can be found in the downstream pipes, but not the upstream ones. This indicates that half of the Casson was sinking while the other half wasn't. Wu Chi He finally figures out the reason for the deviation. The only option available is also the most primitive, dredging. The entire workforce is sent out for dredging 60 meters underwater. Seven days have passed since the Casson tilted. It's been the longest week in Wu Chi He's career. 72 silt pipes are being closely monitored as they operate. After 24 hours of non-stop work, the steel behemoth finally straightens up. However, a more serious problem emerges. For five days in a row, the Casson sinks less than two centimeters per day. That night, a decision is taken. While there are large devices available for breaking underwater stones, engineers must be cautious about using them. 7% of global underwater Casson operations experience sudden settlement, leading to uncontrollable sinking attitudes. As the largest underwater Casson in the world, sudden settlement would endanger the entire project. The project leaders decide to take a conservative approach. They decide to solve the sink rate problem by increasing the frequency of grab buckets. A whole day and night passes, but the sink rate stubbornly stays at 2 centimeters per day. Stones from the riverbed give important information. The cemented glutenite belongs to the stable and continuous stratum. This means boring through it is unlikely to trigger sudden settlement. Wu Chi He has a plan. For a bridge engineer, underwater situations vary significantly from project to project. In the early stages of this project, engineers began research on a small groundbreaking device. This device can break rocks of 100 megapascals 
without damaging surrounding soil layers. Everyone is hoping this will lead to a breakthrough. Robots work at full capacity while 100 builders achieve the 1.5 meter sinking over 15 tough days. The number 5 Casson breaks through the cemented glutenite layer with a stable and controllable settlement attitude, laying the first cornerstones of the world's longest span railway highway dual use cable stayed bridge. At 6 a.m., the first ferry sets off from the Da Gang Ferry Terminal. Wang Jiang has to hurry across the Yangtze River to get to work. A crucial five-year project is about to be completed. We are the only option for crossing the river used to be the ferry. This segment is the busiest in the Zhenjiang section of the Yangtze River, making it an ideal spot to connect the northern and southern railways in Jiangsu province and link up with the Beijing-Shanghai Expressway. The unprecedented idea of building a suspension road come railway bridge was proposed. This requires a suspended cable structure for roadway bridges that also meets high-speed railway standards. The entire set of parameters for wind, vehicles, cables and other factors is extremely complex. Over 50 years later, this bridge that uses cutting-edge technologies is finally becoming a reality. The first high-speed train trial operation is now only 18 hours away. Fang Lung is organizing the final inspection for cable anchorage stability. The Wufengshan Yangtze River Bridge has been installed with the largest land anchorage in the world, with a total weight of 1.33 million tons. It functions as the weight of the bridge, pulling the giant load-bearing cables. This reference point is crucial for monitoring the anchorage settlement. Shortly after completion, the anchorage may settle due to increasing bridge loads. To ensure the safe passage of high-speed trains, settlement after three months must not exceed two millimeters. They make their way up 296 steps and enter the anchorage of the Wufengshan Yangtze River Bridge the last stop of their inspection. This is the bridge's anchorage system, which bears enormous tension from the main cables. Despite holding weekly inspections, Fang Long has to confirm the reliability of the anchorage system just 24 hours before the trial operation. 192 steel wires are bound together to form one of the two main cables carrying the 170,000 ton bridge load. In the early years of bridge building, suspension bridges were thought to be inadequate for railways. However, Chinese bridge builders were determined to build a suspension bridge that could carry high-speed trains across this river. It only takes 15 seconds for a high-speed train to cross the bridge's main span of 1,092 meters. The countdown begins. Two high-speed trains set off in opposite directions from Zhenjiang and Yangzhou towards the Wufengshan Yangtze River Bridge.
Fan Lung has spent over 1,800 days working on this bridge, but this is the first time he's crossing it on a train. Wan Tiang is responsible for monitoring the North Anchorage settlement after the trains pass. The coming 15 seconds are crucial to determining whether the anchorage is functioning as it should. The train starts to accelerate and it will cross the bridge's main span at its top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. The train continues to speed up. The bridge's chief designer, Xu Gongyi, is aboard to examine the structure for himself. With its 1,092 meter main span, everyone expects the bridge to set a new world record. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief as the train passes by without incident. But Fang Long is still waiting for the anchorage settlement data. There is virtually zero bridge settlement. 随着连镇高铁的开通,作为连镇高铁的控制性工程,跨越长江的五峰山长江大桥也迎来铁路面通车。After 50 years, the ferry may now become a thing of the past. High-speed railways connecting the southern and northern parts of Jiangsu province will help more cities and towns integrate into the Yangtze River Delta economic circle. The bridge will bring passengers from one side of the Yangtze to the other, leading them from the past into the future. It is the harshest winter Suzhou has seen in 60 years, and Ye Hongjing has special reason to be worried. The 450-meter-tall Suzhou IFS Tower is shaped like a fishtail. It's currently the tallest building in Jiangsu province, one of the engines of China's economic growth. And the routine inspection before the official handover, a set of data catches Ye Hongjing's attention. This data shows the fluid level height in the TSD water tank installed on the 93rd floor. Skyscrapers of over 400 meters are plagued by stability problems. Designers have tried to install various types of dampers on top of buildings to counteract the effect of windstorms or earthquakes and reduce vibrations. The builders of the Suzhou IFS tower tackled this problem with a 1,300 cubic meter water tank installed on top of the building. This takes advantage of natural liquidity to maintain structural stability in strong winds. Concerned about the risk of the water tank freezing, Ye Hongjing immediately makes his way to the top floor of the tower. Builders used stone wool to insulate the tank and prevent freezing in winter. As they cannot monitor the situation inside the tank, Ye Hongjing has to rely on the water tank accelerometer, which detects flow inside, to perform the final inspection. The green flashing light means the TSD is functioning normally.
85 kilometers from the Suzhou IFS Tower is the 632-meter Shanghai Tower, the tallest building in China, which is equipped with the world's largest tuned mass damper. 12 26-meter steel cables are used to lift the 1,000-ton mass block. In the event of structural vibrations caused by strong winds, the mass block will start to convert kinetic energy into heat energy to counteract the shaking. However, the mass block movement has to be kept within a permissible range. In a world first, Chinese engineers integrate eddy current technology previously used in projects such as magnetic levitation with a wind damper. January 2021 the annual damper inspection is about to start. How will engineers confirm that the 1,000-ton giant meets its design requirements? This task is now on Ding Sunwei's shoulders. The damper on the Shanghai Tower relies mostly on a permanent magnet to function within a controllable range. Ding Sunwei has to ensure that this device is operating smoothly. The damper movement can be kept within an acceptable range with a minimum 2 millitesla central magnetic field intensity inside the permanent magnet. The test now begins. The engineers must not make any mistake with the massive device. The sculpture on the damper is the Shanghai Eye, inspired by the eyes of Zhu Long, as described in the classic of mountains and rivers. It continues to watch over the city as the Shanghai Tower stands tall against storms. In West China, Chengdu's second airport is 10 days away from welcoming its first plane. The current Shuangliu International Airport in Chengdu has reached an annual throughput of over 50 million, far above its capacity. When the Tianfu International Airport opens, a 350 km per hour high-speed railway will pass through the terminal building underground, making it the first grade-separated transportation hub in southwest China. However, seamless integration of land and air transportation poses a tough challenge for builders. Here, Terminal 1 and the Chengdu Zigong High Speed Railway is separated only by an underground vibration isolation floor. Chen Jincheng is preparing for the test flight. Any settlement of over 20 millimeters during takeoff or landing would severely threaten the high speed railway below. To improve the airport's vibration resistance, builders installed 192 vibration isolation supports below the load-bearing foundation pillars. These supports absorb 90% of the horizontal and vertical vibrations through the spring system so that aircraft and high-speed trains can operate safely without interfering with each other. Jian Jingsheng is sensitive to every ground weight. One thing still weighs heavily on his mind. All airport groundwork has to be completed before the vibration isolation system can be activated. The 3,400 square meter glass curtain weighs over 300 tons. 
Jen Jin Chung and his team must take into account the glass weight as well as spatial structure layout after installation before they can determine the parameters for the vibration isolation supports. 5 On-site modification of joints has impacted progress on the installation of the glass curtain walls. It's all hands on deck for this test flight. Three days later, the glass curtain wall installation is completed. Jan Jinsheng now spares no effort for the test flight preparations. Klaus Steven is a vibration isolation expert who's here at the invitation of Jan Jinsheng. And we have a, a train coming this way in the future. It's going at the speed of 350 kilometers per hour. You have to be very careful with the uh, connection, as good as possible according to the drawing. Okay. Steven quickly discovers a problem. Mm. The protection for the vibration isolation supports was too close to the load-bearing foundation pillars. This changes the stress distribution in the vibration isolation springs and affects their function. Despite his experience in over 10 large-scale vibration isolation systems worldwide, Steven is not complacent, as trains traveling at up to 350 kilometers per hour will soon be traveling under the airport. It's the day of the test flight. The final examination begins. Sichuan Airlines has selected Leo Chuanjian, the captain hailed as China's Captain Sully, to be the pilot. In the future, 1,200 flights will land at Chengdu Tianfu International Airport per day, generating a 400-ton impact load on the runway every five minutes. That's a total impact of 120,000 tons per day. Between 10.10 and 10.40, six test aircraft land safely. But Jan Jinsheng can't relax just yet. He still has to perform the final inspection of the vibration isolation system. The vibration isolation springs have settled within the permissible range. Chengdu Tianfu International Airport will operate with Chengdu Shuangliao International Airport as two important aviation hubs for central and western China, bringing Chengdu closer to the international community. Captain Luo Zhuangzhi from China United Airlines is preparing for takeoff. Today, he will pilot flight KN5216 from Chengdu to Beijing on the 100,000th flight to land at Daxing International Airport. It is Captain Luo's first flight to Daxing Airport. 
，大兴那边到时候天气要一下，然后呢，那待会儿就回大兴头一晚我飞呗。好的，嗯，行，那我飞。After confirming the weather, Wu Zhuangzhi takes off and will arrive at Beijing Daxing International Airport in two hours. Construction began on Daxing International Airport in December 2014 after years of planning. Thousands of builders participated in the building of the world's largest and most challenging free-form steel grid. 54 months later, the world's largest international aviation hub went into operation. Yang Na is one of the first chief controllers at Daxing Airport Control Tower. Today, Daxing International Airport will welcome its 100,000th landing since going into operation. Hey, Yubang, you have a question about the wind wind. 嗯，转动南风大概多少米？四到七是吧？是现在就开始转了是吗？啊，南风增加趋势，我知道。嗯，拜拜。嗯，十一点以后动南风。Weather conditions can greatly affect flight safety. According to the latest weather forecast at Daxing International Airport, the wind will shift from north to south. To ensure safety, aircraft are required to take off upwind. Wings can only generate enough air pressure difference to lift the aircraft if there is sufficient relative velocity. Moreover, a plane could skid off the runway when landing if a headwind changes into a tailwind. To guarantee flight safety, Yang Na has to organize all preceding flights to take off and land safely before the wind shifts. The Airport Operations Center is the Interdepartmental Command and Coordination Information Hub for Emergencies. High speed operations and combat readiness require messages to be processed in seconds. The Information Hub has to reorganize runways based on the latest weather forecast. Hey, Zhong Tan, hello. Uh, I'll change the wind, right? Hey, okay. Then that south wind will be at 25 knots. South wind will be at 25 knots. Okay, I got it. Uh, south wind will be at 4 knots, right? According to the latest weather report, the wind direction will change in one hour. Runways have to be shifted in advance. Yang Na must empty the runways within 40 minutes. The inspection team must complete their work in five minutes. With 35 minutes left before wind shift, Yang Na has to give takeoff instructions to all aircraft on runways in just 20 minutes. Boarding begins for flights waiting for takeoff. At 10.21, the last departing flight takes off and Yang Na can finally start the runway shift procedure. The predicted wind shift will occur in 30 minutes. Meanwhile, flights from all over China are approaching. Flight KN5216, piloted by Luo Zhangzhi, is scheduled to land at Daxing International Airport in 17 minutes. Now, 
The runway shift is completed in five minutes. This is just one of hundreds of daily routine tasks carried out by the AOC. At 10.45, flight KN5216 from Chengdu enters the landing route to Daxing International Airport and is warmly welcomed. The world-leading lighting guidance system simplifies complex landing instructions into a single sentence. Follow the green lights. Flight KN5216 lands safely, marking the 100,000th arrival at Daxing. At this world-class intelligent airport, its target throughput of 100 million will gradually accumulate through every safe takeoff and landing. The 754th landing at Daxing Airport today also marks the millionth flight that Yang Na has supervised. Meanwhile, with every safe departure and arrival, this world-class super airport will continue to connect China with the world. Thank you.